In today's podcast, we will discuss Lewis Hamilton's thoughts on new venues on the calendar, McLaren and Fernando Alonso going to the 2019 Indy 500, and our predictions for the final race in Abu Dhabi. To know what we have to say, find out in this video. So here we are guys for another episode of the podcast and as ever I'm here with Neblo. How are you doing mate with one week before the final race? I'm doing fairly well mate. How are you doing yourself? All good as usual. I have to say though before we get properly into this podcast there hasn't been um, you know, a ton of news this week so don't expect a massively packed uh, podcast this week but we definitely do have some things to talk about. So first off we'll talk about Lewis Hamilton saying that he would prefer to race at tracks of real racing history instead of new venues such as say you know Bahrain or China or even Vietnam the Grand Prix we're going to in 2020. He'd prefer races in you know Britain, France, Germany, Italy, even the United States as he said uh, in his quote and I'm going to read a part of it now and this is what he had to say on the whole situation so he says we've got a lot of real racing history in England Germany Italy and now in the States it is starting to grow but you only have one event per year in those places if it was my business I'd be trying to do more events in those countries and then he said something a bit controversial uh, to do with India which we'll get on to now he said about Vietnam, he said, I've been to Vietnam before and it is beautiful. I've been to India before to a race, which was strange because India was such a poor place. Yet we had this massive, beautiful Grand Prix track made in the middle of nowhere. I felt very conflicted when I went to that Grand Prix. And then he talked about Turkey and how it was a good track, but no one really came to uh, the races now. I think Lewis is kind of correct in terms of I think we should, you know, stick to racing, um, you know, in countries where F1 has its core audience. So basically Europe and I think we can say North America and Brazil as well. Brazil does still love its F1. But, you know, you, you can get you know, great tracks in these, you know, places of the world where there is no real F1 audience. For example, I don't think Malaysia before 1999 really had an audience for F1, but look at the track, you know, that they built for that race. And for quite a while, that race was successful. You also have Baku. I think Baku at the moment is doing very well. So I get his point. Um, but I don't think we should just keep it, you know, where F1's core audience is. Nib, what do you think about this? Do you think F1 should just, you know, stick to Europe and, say, North America and even Australia? Or do you think it should try and spread around the world and try and race in new places all the time? Well, I think Hamilton's hit two issues which really need to here, and that is the placement of race and also ticket prices because in India they are not the most well off country, especially because there are so many people in India, it's quite ridiculous. And they had this beautiful Grand Prix track, as you said, but people just couldn't afford to go to the track. Now, perhaps if it was in New Delhi or Kolkata or Bangalore, maybe if it was in a place where they're at where people are a bit better off, maybe there were people who could actually go to the race. He also added, if you have the German Grand Prix and you've got a Grand Prix in Berlin, I think connecting to cities where a lot of people are is probably a good thing, not necessarily going to countries where they don't know so much about Formula One. Well, I disagree with the last part there, but with that first part, he is bang on. If you have it in cities where there are lots of people and they have some amount of money, they're going to go and check it out because that, that's what happened in London when they had the live F1 show there. People were like, oh, what's this thing going on here? I hear loud things. And then they just went and watched and it was a really great event. So 
as usual, he had to defend his comments on Instagram, which is quite hilarious how any time he says absolutely anything, he has to defend everything he says. Um, but, yeah, I feel as if Hamilton was spot on here. There are some places where we went previously which were kind of questionable, like South Korea. They had all these plans to build all these apartments and shopping centres around the track, but that just never eventuated. Maybe if they actually built the track closer to Seoul or in a place where there's more people, more people would have went because I thought the South Korean Grand Prix was actually quite a decent track. So I think I think Hamilton gets gets to a good point here. I don't know what you think, but he has some very valid points. I think when it comes to racing in the cities, from a business point of view, it does make a lot of sense because there's more money to make in city racing and that's why you know we've gone to Baku we're going to Vietnam and I think if we do lose the British Grand Prix from Silverstone we definitely will be having an F1 race I think soon enough in London because of the financial opportunity I still don't think you know the racing at street circuits is really good at all but if they can find a way around that, say including a massive straight on these street circuits like they've done with Baku and like we're getting with the race in Hanoi, then definitely I think you know F1 can move more towards street circuit uh, racing and it not have a massive effect on the racing, say like you know Monaco or Singapore does. Yes, I, I do also agree with that. And that is one thing with the Vietnamese Grand Prix is that they have got it in a place where there are loads and loads of people. So it's good to see that they've addressed one of those issues with the Vietnamese Grand Prix. Right, so we'll move on and go on to our next topic, which is Fernando Alonso is returning to the Indy 500 for 2019. But McLaren are going to be helping him in setting up a car for that event they're going to have apparently according to Zach Brown a separate entity in McLaren setting up that car for the 2019 Indy 500 now you know from Fernando Alonso's point of view this is great because he can go for an, you know another uh win at Indy and can complete the triple crown of course but from McLaren's point of view I don't get it I don't get it. It seems to me that only doing this because, you know, or, you know, for Fernando Alonso, they're not doing it for themselves. And I still think this, and I think I um, maybe said this for when they, you know, went to the 2017 Indy 500, McLaren should be focusing on F1. Now, I know, you know, they've said, you know, the whole IndyCar thing is going to be separate from the F1 team. But once we get closer... To May and they start practicing and then do qualifying and then obviously get closer to the race of the Indy 500 which is normally on the same day as the Monaco Grand Prix they're going to be you know more in the news for you know IndyCar and kind of focusing more on that than F1 and that's not the way it should be McLaren was set up originally to be an F1 team not an IndyCar team not you know, this road car machine that they are now, they are, at their core, a Formula One racing team. And for me, should be focusing on that because they are so far behind where they should be. They are at the back with Williams, who also should be a lot higher up. I'd say right now, McLaren have the slowest car on the grid. I, I just don't get why McLaren are doing this. Just, you know, let Fernando Alonso do the Indy 500, but, you know, do it with another team. Don't, uh, you know, spend money and give resources to this project when you desperately need to fix your F1 team. I just, I don't get it. Uh, Niv, what do you think about this? And do you think for McLaren... Do you think this will distract them in 2019? I, I don't think McLaren in 2019, even if they focused fully on, you know, F1, would really be any better than they have been this year. But it just seems to me that they're not focusing on what they should be. I actually completely disagree with you. I think this is a 
great, great opportunity for Clark to be part of something very special. If they are a team which enters the IndyCar Championship or the Indy 500 for the first time, their first race, and then Fernando Alonso wins the race, wouldn't that be something special for McLaren? You get their name out there, sell more cars, every, just everywhere, especially in America. This is a great opportunity for McLaren, and I don't think it will distract them from what they're doing in Formula One at the time. They've been focusing on next year's car for quite some time now. And during the season, you don't have to pay 100% attention to to the season, honestly. They, they will still have enough resources dedicated. McLaren, McLaren have a lot of resources at their hand, and I don't see why they can't do this. But on one point, it'll be quite interesting to see which sort of engine they run during the Indy 500 to see whether or not they want they run a Chevrolet or even if they create their own special engine for the Indy 500 because Alonso couldn't get a seat in a Honda-powered car after his comments that he's made over previous years and there was no space in the Chevrolet cars. So this is why McLaren, that's why McLaren had done it is because Fernando Alonso hasn't been able to get a seat Anyway, so this will be quite interesting, and I really, really want Alonso to win the Indy 500. I think he proved in 2017 that he he certainly can win the Indy 500. He led 24 laps or something around that before he retired with his engine failure, which was just no shock at all. And I think this is a really great opportunity for McLaren, so I'm absolutely all for it. I understand from a business point of view that, you know, getting McLaren's name out there is important, of course, and they do want to be in the news, I guess, for winning something. That is important. But again, at their core, they're an F1 team. And uh, I don't know. I just I just think they should be focusing fully on F1 and kind of cut back on the, you know... The road cars, not fully, of course, because they do, you know, sell a lot of money and it does help McLaren as a business. But it just seems to me they're not focusing as much on their F1 team as they probably should be. And, and as you say, they do have plenty of money and resources. But I, I still think, it, particularly during that month, it will, um, it definitely will distract them for sure. And also, you know, with them doing this for Fernando Alonso, I'll be honest, even though I do support Alonso over McLaren when it comes to, you know, who has failed since 2015, of course, but I don't think McLaren should be making Fernando Alonso um, or, like, supporting him this much because at the end of the day, he is just one man. He is a great racing driver, of course, but... No one person is bigger than the team. And it just feels to me like McLaren are treating him like a god, almost. And they'll do anything for him. And I don't like that. I would rather McLaren just focus on what they're going to do after, of course, Fernando leaves McLaren at the end of 2018. I'd rather they focus on the 2019 car, which I'm sure they have for some time, but also Sainz and Norris. But definitely, again... They are going to have plenty of questions about Fernando Alonso during 2019, I think. Yeah, I also feel as if McLaren feels as if they owe something to Fernando Alonso after making his career a living hell over the past few seasons. So maybe, maybe McLaren feels some sympathy for him. I don't know. Also, one point that we haven't discussed is that Bob Fernley, who of course was the uh, deputy team principal to VJ Malia at Force India is going to be heading this Indy 500 campaign. And I must say, I think it is more likely that McLaren are going to win the Indy 500 than that they are ever going to get a podium over at least the next two seasons. So I think this is worth it for them. Oh, that's for sure. They're definitely not going to get a podium in 2019 or 2020 or even probably 2021 or 2022. And I will say on that point about Fernando Alonso, they definitely do owe him something. Even though I don't think they should support him this much, they definitely owe him something because 
they have destroyed the final part, uh, part sorry, of his career, for sure. Because if they produced a car that was as good as, say, pace-wise, the 2012 or 2011 car, Fernando maybe could still be an F1 past 2018 and might have added to his uh, two Drivers World Championships. Right, so next up, we'll get on to the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix predictions. And first off... I am going to leave it to Nib. It's very tough, actually, to predict, you know, qualifying and, you know, the podium for the race. Hopefully, you guys in the comments put your predictions in uh, the comments. But, yeah, Nib, it's it's definitely tough to predict, that's for sure. It certainly is, and that's why I'm going for the safest of safest bets and that Lewis Hamilton is going to take pole at the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. Now, usually I'd predict the rest of the of the top three, but I haven't a absolute clue what's going to happen in qualifying, so we're just going to leave that to the unknown. But in the race, I'm going to predict that Sebastian Vettel wins over Lewis Hamilton in second place, and this won't be a shock to many people. In third place, it, for in his final race at Red Bull, Daniel Ricciardo will get on the podium for his first non-winning podium finish of the season. I just so barely want this to happen. You know, it could be the last time we see Danny Rick on the podium for ages. And, you know, I just want to do a shoey. So why not? Yeah, it'd be, it'd, it'd be great to see that. Hopefully, Ricciardo does have, you know, a similar race to Brazil. If he has a similar race to that and... He doesn't have a penalty for some reason. I think he has a very good chance of doing so. So hopefully he does have a good race. Now for me, I'm also going to go Hamilton on pole. Because it's a safe bet. Because Ferrari and Vettel just bottle it. When it comes to getting pole position. Vettel has not been on pole since Hockenheim. We know what happened after that of course. Um, you know, second in qualifying will probably be Vettel. And then third... It's a, a throw up between Raikkonen and Bottas. I'll probably go Kimi Raikkonen. But in the race, it's a lottery as to who out of the top six is going to be on the podium. But I am going to go Sebastian Vettel to win because I think Ferrari will have enough pace to win the Grand Prix. I said that for Brazil, but look what happens. So knowing me, that will go uh, tits up. In second place... I'm going to go Max Verstappen. Because of what happened in Brazil with the whole Ocon stuff, he is going to be so fired up to get at least a podium, if not a race win. He's going to be so fired up. So watch out for Max Verstappen on race day in Abu Dhabi. And then in third place, I'm going to go Kimi Raikkonen. The reason is because I think Mercedes are going to struggle on their tyres quite a lot. Daniel Ricciardo, of course, will be in there as well because I think Red Bull will have the best car when it comes to race pace. But I think for Abu Dhabi, I hope we're not jinxing ourselves, but I think we are in for a very competitive final race of 2018 and hopefully we do get one. Right, now we'll get on to our final couple of podcast questions. The first one is from Simon Cragland who asks, do you guys think Brendan Hartley deserves to stay in F1. Now, from a personality point of view, I don't think he um, should go out of F1 because he's such a nice guy, just a, a top bloke. He uh, he really is. But when it comes to his pace and when it comes to driving, I don't think he has done enough. He has had or you know shown glimpses of what he could do but there just hasn't been enough there, I think, for Toro Rosso to select him for 2019. Saying that, though, um, I just saw this. I think today or yesterday, Formula E released their entry list for uh, 2019. And Alexander Albon was on it. Now, I don't know if it's kind of, you know, that could change. I don't know when it comes to Albon being removed from the entry list, but... Definitely interesting to note. Uh, Nib, what do you think about Brendan Hartley? Do you think he deserves to stay? Or 
No. Well, I really do want Brendan Hartley to stay in Formula One. He's a, he's a great guy. And oh, and since Helmut Marco has laid down a marker to him to say, you've got to beat Pierre Gasly if you want to stay in F1. He has been very close to Gasly and in some races beating him. So I think if Hartley has a great weekend here, he might be able to to secure his seat. And the final one is from Bois, and he asks us, do you think it was a right of Max to confront Ocon the way he did when it comes to the, you know, the pushing? I said this in my video on Thursday on the whole Max Verstappen Esteban Ocon incident. I believe that video will be in the description of this. So if you have not seen it, it will be uh, down below. He wasn't. Absolutely no. Because... You know, violence, and you know, it wasn't serious violence, but at the end of the day, he did use, I guess, technically violence uh, against Ocon. It's not going to solve anything. It never does and it never will. He wasn't right in doing it. I don't condone it, but I will say, I think the two days of public service for the FIA was a bit harsh. I've definitely seen worse in F1. You know, Nelson Piquet punching and kicking. I think it was Roberto Salazar. Uh, at Hockenheim in 1982, when he took PK out. So, I think the punishment doesn't fit the crime, but definitely Verstappen was not at all right for what he did to Ocon Nib. Do you echo that, or you know, do you have a different opinion? Um, well, I have no issue with the way he confronted him, but the pushing was certainly not needed. There was absolutely no need to push him. With the community service thing, I don't think it matters too much. Sebastian Vettel did it by video call, I believe. So yeah. it doesn't it, it doesn't really matter at all. Um so yeah, he was okay in the way he actually confronted, went up to Ocon, but as soon as he pushed him, he crossed the line there. Simple as that. Right, so that's it for this podcast, guys. The next one will be reviewing the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix, the last race of 2018. It actually has just flown by uh, this season. And as ever, thank you, Niblo, for joining me. Thanks, mate. It's always a pleasure. And hopefully we have a very good end season. But anyway, guys, that has been it for this video. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this. Don't forget, guys, I'll be back tomorrow with This Week in F1 live. As well, don't forget to join my Discord server, link below in the description, also with my Twitter and my website. Comment down below what you thought of this video, and comment down below what did you think about our opinions on these topics. Please comment down below what you think about those topics, and until next time, it's been me, Chazzer HD. Goodbye. <laughs>